Eddie Hearn admits that Luis King Kong Ortiz is a risky fight for Dillian White, but he says Luis Ortiz has no value for Dillian White. Stay tuned. Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Shout out to the Boxing Voice Nessus. Been at work. Um, they had the Daniel Jacobs, Sergey Dervinchenko press conference, and the Boxing Voice caught up with Eddie Hearn. Did an exclusive interview, it looked like. Link in the description, check them out, give them the view. And some great questions asked. One was to define what, what the situation is with Deontay Wilder, his mandatory, is it Dominic Brazil, is it Dillian White, things of that sort. Eddie Hearn was given his, his two cents midway through. It looked like he got lost in thought and it was a, a bit confusing. But one thing, you guys can watch it for yourself to hear it verbatim. He did say something towards the tail end that was like clockwork, and we'll get to that. He said that Dillian White, Dominic Brazil, basically were both like fighting to become Wilder's number one mandatory, right? He says that Dominic Brazil was supposed to fight Bermain Stavern in a final eliminator, but then he said Stavern pulled out. But I don't know if it... it um, left his memory the only reason he, he said the wbc made a, me a mistake but listen this is what happened the only reason bermain stavern quote unquote pulled out is because he got main evented to fight deontay wilder so he skipped the final eliminator with dominic brazil because luis king kong ortiz had failed drug tests with two substances that were on the ban list and he was supposed to be the main event back last year in november i went to that fight i covered that fight right so wilder was supposed to fight Luis king kong ortiz they had to do more research because he failed the drug test so he was out of the equation and stavern got elevated instead of he was already number one because he was supposed to fight povetkin another guy who failed a drug test and stavern went to russia right i have pictures they did a weigh-in and then that's when it was announced that um povetkin had failed a second drug test for the year same guy that joshua is fighting but that's neither here nor there. So that's one thing in this ed interview that Eddie Hearn didn't really mention. He made it sound like Stavern pulled out with um, an injury or something. No, Dominic Brazil was supposed to fight Stavern. Yes, he was supposed to get some step aside money to pay or get paid step aside money since he was supposed to be the number one mandatory and Wilder was instead fighting Luis King Kong Ortiz. But after Ortiz failed that, that drug test, then they elevate us to Vern. So Dominic Brazil fought Eric Molina for the co-main event or or something on the undercard to become the mandatory, right? And Dillian White was fighting uh, Lucas Brown or whoever for, to move up the ranking. But one thing he said, Eddie Hearn said in this interview that he admitted that the Luis King Kong Ortiz is a risky fight. He literally said that. But then he also said that it serves no purpose, that the WBC made a mistake and they were stalling Dillian White out and Dillian White versus Luis Ortiz. Um, it made no sense. It holds no value for them to fight him, which I totally disagree with 1000 percent. Of course, it holds value. The WBC is asking you to do it. One, two. The fans respect Luis King Kong Ortiz. I was at the Mikey Garcia versus Robert Easter card, and Luis Ortiz fought a no name in Raz Kojanu on the undercard, and he received a, a warm reception. Ask anybody who was there, right, in LA, a very warm reception, a standing ovation basically, and the crowd went berserk after he got the knockout of Raz Kojanu, who again is not a big marquee name, but people respect Luis King Kong Ortiz in his fight game and especially after the Wilder performance seeing they they actually 
that was the type of fight where it's like kind of like a Gotti Ward type of fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily comparing it to the Gotti Ward, you know, because I know that holds a special place in everyone's heart. But in the same in the same breath is even if there's a loser, you respect the fuck out of both fighters. That's how Wilder versus Luis Ortiz was. Yeah, Luis Ortiz in the end lost, but his stock didn't drop because he gave a, a hellified um, account of himself in the ring and troubled Wilder. Wilder gave him problems, knocked him down. So it was just overall a, a great fight. So that I totally disagree with what Eddie Hearn is saying. You guys listen to the interview. He's, he's basically like I predict. And you know what the funny thing is? The Boxing Voice just uploaded this video maybe an hour ago, 20 minutes ago. I don't know. I did a live stream earlier yesterday and I told you this about Luis Ortiz. I said, I don't want to hear any. And I didn't even know about this interview because it was just uploaded. I wasn't there, you know. And what did I tell you? Just like clockwork, I told you people are going to front on Luis King Kong Ortiz and make it like he don't sell or he's boring or he's coming off of a loss. So now he has to build all the way back up, but have no problem with fighting Joseph Parker coming off of a loss. Anybody that was on my live stream heard me say this. Once again, Ego's Army is destroying all arguments, new media. You guys see it. How is it we're able to forecast and predict all of this stuff, all of the excuses before it happens? You know, I told you they were going to front on Luis King Kong Ortiz. But just like I said in that live stream, unless whoever is fighting him, I don't, you know, unless like if it's a promoter, I'm not saying the promoter has to fight Luis Ortiz, but if they promote a heavyweight, then I don't really care about what they're talking about unless they put their heavyweight, unless they're willing to put their heavyweight in with Luis Ortiz. If it's a heavyweight, I don't care what they have to say to dismiss Luis Ortiz's skill unless they're trying to fight him. If they're not, then it doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean? And I told you this was just like Rigondeaux, just like clockwork. I told you what was going to happen. And you hear it in this Eddie Hearn interview. He's making it sound like there's no, there's absolutely no gain if you fight Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz looked sharper in his loss to Deontay Wilder than Joseph Parker looked in his loss to Anthony Joshua. So two motherfuckers coming off of a loss, what's the real difference? You know what I mean? And even though Luis Ortiz was not a champion, that's because he wasn't afforded opportunities to fight Joshua. You know, he got one opportunity at age 38 or whatnot to fight Wilder. And he, he came close, you know, he came close. But he didn't get an opportunity at Klitschko and Tyson Fury when he had the belt or Joseph Parker. So he didn't get those opportunities. But belt or no belt, belt doesn't define you. We knew Errol Spence was the man. We knew he was good besides not having a belt before he got a belt. Obviously, I'm referring to, you know, what I'm saying so a belt is not the, the end all be all. There's a lot of guys with no belt and they'll beat the shit out of the person with the belt. We know this as far as it relates to boxing. You know what I mean? So it's just it's crazy how they're trying to they're trying to dismiss Luis Ortiz. And then Eddie Hearn says he admits it's a risky fight. That's that's the real reason to me. It's a risky fight. You probably feel it's the same pay or, or lesser pay than Joseph Parker. You know, Parker just fought in the UK against Joshua. So you'd rather try to make that fight. But Luis Ortiz will help anybody's profile as of right now. You know, he's only has one loss and it was a respected loss. He's a good fighter. He could box. He can bang power in both hands. He's a left hander, southpaw, hurt Wilder with the right hand. That's what set everything up. Go watch that fight again. Watch what set everything up when Wilder first got hurt in round seven. It wasn't even a left hand initially. You know what I mean? His countering skill on the Mikey Garcia, Robert Easter undercard, beautiful. Beautiful how he set his man up and followed up with the left. You know what I'm saying? Straight southpaw killer. So, Dillian White versus Luis Ortiz. I don't know what Eddie Hearn's talking about. He's saying that the, the WBC is going to call for a Dominic Brazil, right, in December, you know, after the Tyson Fury. So he says he's not trying to wait two years. Why would you have to wait two years? You know what I'm saying? Let's say, let's say he's fighting Tyson Fury. Let's say the Brazil, let's say Tyson Fury loses to Wilder, right? And then um, Tyson Fury I don't know. I just feel like Wilder is going to fight Brazil, possibly. You know what I mean? We don't know because what if, it like, it's just the bottom line is, is I feel it's an excuse. Here, here's another scenario, too. If he doesn't feel that Dominic Brazil is going to fight Wilder or is not going to get called till December. So is Dominic Brazil 
in Eddie Hearn's mind, you see, you can't, this is why you can't predicate your career based on what another man is doing. You know what I'm saying? That's like when Amir Khan was waiting around for Mayweather, you know, and then Mayweather fought Maidana. It was a good fight, a tough fight. Amir Khan's wait, 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 stalling out his career. And then guess what? Floyd picks Maidana again. He said, we can make some money here. Some people are saying it was too close for comfort. Watch me beat him easier, you know, and then he rematched Maidana. Meanwhile, Amir Khan has stalled out his whole career waiting on someone. So that's why you don't wait. So Dominic Brazil, there's no he's he's number one or whatever mandatory now, but there's no guarantee that he doesn't fight anyone next. You know what I'm saying? What if the Tyson Fury card? What if they offer him good money to fight whoever Amir Mansoor rematch and he loses? You get what I'm saying? who knows because dominic brazil hasn't fought in a minute you know so he might end up fighting someone before and we don't know if he's going to retain his spot so had dillian white and luis ortiz fought you know it's a chance that dominic brazil fights someone and maybe he loses it just depends on who he's fighting you get what i'm saying so you don't wait around wait around the wbc asked you to do it and it would have been a great fight in the uk or anywhere else and it would have gave dillian white the respect that he's looking for and you admit it's a risky fight but then you you say it's not there's no value that it's just you gotta you gotta make these things make sense to me you know what i mean how is it a risky fight and a dangerous fight you're basically admitting but then you're also saying that there's no value and why would we fight him to be the mandatory in two year when we could do the wbo or or fight kubat pool because again i thought the goal was you want to fight against Deontay Wilder so why wouldn't you do with the the guy he has one belt why wouldn't you do the guidelines or whatever the process is that the WBC the one belt that Wilder has is asking you to do which also again happens to be a good fight so I'm not buying what Eddie Hearn says about it's a risky fight that, that is true it is a risky fight but that's why I think it didn't get made as opposed to it's a risky fight, but there's no value to it. Just listen to the interview. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.